don't say I didn't warn you. Maybe we were a biological experiment of some kind, a, a small one. But their son was home and he was the party that was holding Cindy in the basement. Common question of all, how were the pyramids built? This number sequence of this coordinate matches exactly the speed of light traveling through space measured in meters per second correspond to an exact fraction of both the latitude and longitude measurements at the equator. It wasn't hail, it was a gelatinous like the turf. Mission found the first startling clue. The substance contained human white blood cells, but exactly what it was and why it fell from the sky could not be determined. Maybe just get people a little bit sick to find out, say if an enemy did come over here with a biological bomb or something and dropped it. Um, maybe just a test run to see how, to, how it would, what would happen. Someone painted the words, I love you, Cindy, in large letters, along with a smaller, by GW. Oh, oh, these old things? Oh, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's just something I've been trying out. I got acrylics very well. They're green and they have a brown heart, and then my best friend also got brown, but with a green heart. I got acrylics for the very first time because it's my birthday today. <laughs> it's my birthday today. Um, I turned 19 today. Give it up, you know. What way to make this day even better uh, than by, you know, hanging out with you and talking about some conspiracy theories. Before we get into anything, I do wanna say that in the description box down below, I've actually created a Google Forms. So if there's any like conspiracy or person that you specifically want me to talk about, you can enter that down below. That's a good way for you to just contact right through me in case I don't see like your Instagram DM or something. Without further ado, let's get on to the conspiracy theories. Dun dun dun. So the first one we're going to be talking about is the Oakville, Washington incident. On August 7th of 1994, around 3 a.m. in Oakville, Washington, it started to rain. Dun dun dun. <laughs> no, this wasn't really that big of a deal because, you know, it's rain. But what was different about this rain in particular is that this rain was not rain. It was very small gelatin blobs kind of like Orbeez falling out of the sky. And it didn't just happen on August 7th, it happened six times over the course of three weeks. And this gelatin substance caught the attention of a police officer when he was on the job and it started to pour this gelatin. He went to go wipe off his windshield with his wipers, but then realized there was the gelatin that kind of spread over his windshield. He pulled over, put some gloves on, and he he confirmed that it was a gelatin substance. It wasn't until a woman by the name of Dottie Harn actually had the courage to touch one of these like Orby things with her bare hands because she didn't know what it was. She went into her backyard and she saw them completely spread all over her yard. So I just went over and I touched it and it wasn't hail. It was a gelatinous like material because she thought that it was possibly a hailstone until it was squishy like gelatin that same night her family reported seeing her on the bathroom floor curled up in a ball and sweating profusely and so they went and took her to the hospital and they found out that she had grew violently ill after touching this weird substance dodi wasn't the only one who grew violently ill after touching this substance most most of the residents in this town also grew violently ill with extreme flu-like symptoms, but not just for two weeks, but instead six month time period. And it was also said that some pets even came in contact with this gelatin substance and some had even died from it. Some of the symptoms when coming in contact with this substance included extreme vertigo, difficulty breathing, and nausea, as well as blurred vision. So that's kind of the backstory of how this whole thing came to be but what exactly was this extremely toxic gelatin substance that was just 
falling out of the sky. As I said earlier, Dodie had actually fallen to the floor and her family took her to the hospital. Well, she was hospitalized for four days and the doctors concluded that the reason why she was acting like that was due to an ear infection. But Dodie had said that she has had many ear infections and none of them she's reacted in that way. So it's no coincidence that this gelatin falls from the sky and then all of a sudden she touches it with her bare hands and then she gets the worst of the worst when it comes to her ear infection symptoms. It just like, it didn't add up for her. And so she decided to do her own investigating. Dodie was smart and she decided to collect a sample of this blob and gave it to the doctor and asked him if he could perform testing on it. The doctor agreed out of curiosity because he was also wondering what was in this blob as well. As I said, it was just randomly falling from the sky and none of the police or anything were really saying anything about it. And so when the doctor did testing on these mysterious blobs and what he found was human white blood cells inside of the blobs. A lab technician found the first startling clue. The substance contained human white blood cells, but exactly what it was and why it fell from the sky could not be determined. If you don't know what the white blood cells are, they're basically cells that are found in tissue and bone marrow and actually are used to fight off diseases, which was really interesting because if these white blood cells are used to fight off diseases, then why was everyone getting sick? And also, why are there human white blood cells? <laughs> like and they're just falling out of the sky. That was really, really weird. And it also piqued Dodie's interest onto what this actually was. The doctor was very, very confused when he received this. And so he instead just sent it over to the Washington Department of Health where it was tested again. And they found two types of bacteria that can only be found in the human digestive system. And so once this information was released, still the police, the government, the Oakville officials, no one was saying anything about this. And so it kind of forced people to sort of make up their own theories of what happened because no one was giving them definite answers. And that's where the conspiracy theories come in of what exactly this blob was. When it was sent to the Washington Department of Health, it was actually tested by a man named Mike McDowell. And Mike McDowell concluded that it was probably some waste that fell out of an airplane that was passing by. They let off things in the air all the time here. And testing, you know, there's testing done all over the place. There's a lot of places you can't go into. Because when people go to the bathroom on airplanes, it typically sometimes happens where the bottom flap will kind of be open a little bit and sort of like all of the waste will fall out, but not a lot. This theory really didn't make sense. It just kind of sounded like Oakville wanted to shut up its residents because people were asking, how could something like this happen over a 20 mile radius of the town and only happen in that town? And over the past three weeks, it happened six times. Like these little blobs just didn't make sense with what they were saying. And also it was concluded that all of the waste that comes from these airplanes are actually dyed blue, whether these blobs were transparent. And the Oakville officials still kind of believe in this theory, but it just doesn't make sense. Now, the second theory is that people actually believe that this was a way to transport bacteria. And once all of the rain was done, these samples of blobs started to circulate all over the place from doctor's office to health offices to biology labs with everyone trying to figure out the makeup of what these blobs actually were. But it was also reported that as these samples started circulating around these different doctor's office and labs, people started realizing that the samples slowly just started to go missing. And even today, there is not a single sample of this mysterious blob to be found. Kind of as if if someone was purposely trying to make sure that there were no samples of this blob left. Now, this is where theory two comes in. Dodie didn't just have the single sample that she sent to the hospital. She actually took a bunch and froze it in her freezer to ensure that samples were still left. Now, Dodie sent this sample off to AM Test Laboratories, where they did a testing on the frozen sample and they found a eukaryotic eukaryotic, eukaryotic, eukaryotic cell. 
that's only found in living creatures. And since this cell was only found in living creatures, it then erupted into the jellyfish theory. Basically, Oakville, Washington was near a military testing site. And so people believed that it's possible that a military naval bombing actually blew up a school of jellyfish. And then after the school of jellyfish had been blown up, the pieces had gone into the sky. And then when it rained, it rained down these, these blobs. Okay, Oakville tried to come out with this theory. Again, people didn't really buy it because if it was part of a jellyfish and it was sitting up there for a long time, there would be some sort of smell to these blobs, but they were completely odorless. And especially the number of times that it fell six times over the next three weeks and with how much it rained and how much surface area it covered. If it was a school of jellyfish, it wasn't going to happen as much as it did and also rain down as much as it did. The Air Force actually came out about this theory and they said that they were indeed practicing in that area, but they have no knowledge of creating or dispersing this jellyfish stuff. Sometimes I get so deep into these videos and I just forget I'm doing. I'm like, oh yeah, I actually have to put on my makeup. Now, the third and final theory about this Oakville incident is that it was actually done on purpose with the intention of testing a military experiment. As I said in the last theory, Oakville lives very, very close to a military testing site. And so they were thinking that maybe they were the product of a military test in that they wanted to see how well these little blobs were as a way to attack. Maybe we were a biological experiment of some kind, a, a small one, maybe just get people a little bit sick to find out, say if an enemy did come over here with a biological bomb or something and dropped it. Um, maybe just a test run to see how, to, how it would what would happen. Thank goodness no one had passed away in this incident, but a bunch of animals had. The blobs were deadly. They were. They were very deadly. They didn't kill anyone, but they made them very, very sick. And that's why people think that maybe this was done on purpose to see the extent of what this experiment would go, which is so like odd, by the way. <laughs> like if you were going to do something like that, like wouldn't you test it on subjects like test subjects or something obviously people are gonna say something you know they're not gonna be like oh that's weird okay and then just go on with their life like obviously i don't know people are going to say something do they just expect people to live with it and not i don't know very very odd i sort of believe the military experiment one let me know in the comments below what guys you are thinking. Now, our second conspiracy is the who built the Giza pyramids. The Giza pyramid is located in Egypt, and it is one of the oldest architectures in the world that is still standing today. The pyramid was said to be built by Egyptians, part of the old kingdom world, and it was said to be built between the years of 2589 and 2504, making it 85 years to complete this pyramid. Now, the reason why this pyramid is one of the the seven wonders of the world is because there is no written prominent factor onto the reasoning as to why this pyramid was made. It's so interesting. Every aspect of it is just incredible and whoever built it was just way ahead of their time. Now the pyramid, first of all, is 3 60th of a degree north, which is the most accurate alignment with anything on the earth. A more accurate alignment than any other structure on Earth. When you look at the Great Pyramid's alignment, it's aligned very, very close to true north. And not only that, but this pyramid's placement is so specific that it is in the direct center of the earth, where if you were to take each of the corners and expand them over the earth, they would make a perfect way around and go right back to the middle. The technological intelligence of all of this is just way ahead of people's time. And scientists have even taken the direct coordinates of this pyramid and found that the coordinates of the pyramid is number by number the exact same as the speed of light in meters per second. There is just like 
There is so much. It can't be a coincidence. This would be a very freaky coincidence. And since there was no physical evidence as to why this was placed there, and it's just so incredible how their like technological intelligence was just so far ahead of our times that it makes people theorize as to what exactly happened. Because as I said, no one knows why it was built there. No one knows how it was built. I actually don't know how tall it is on the top of my head, but I'll put the measurements right here it's insanely huge nothing that just like a typical person typically today if we were to build something like that we would use like cranes big machinery but back then all they had was people like and workers there was no crane or maybe there was girl who knows there are two really popular theories to this one the one being that there was possibly an internal ramp scientists actually went inside of the pyramid and realized that there were little rooms found in the pyramid as if people were living in there and also they took testing from inside of the pyramid the places that they could not go and found that 15 percent of the pyramid was hollow meaning that there was no rocks until they realized that the 15% hollowness of the pyramid the empty spaces inside the monument seemed to form a spiral back in 1986 Hui Dong Bui and his colleagues didn't know what to make of this startling discovery now in light of Jean-Pierre Houdin's theory of the internal ramp the study makes sense microgravimetry offers the scientific proof the architect needed this irrefutable element convinces Jean-Pierre to devote his life to solving the mystery of how the Great Pyramid of Khufu was built. They built a spiral to be in the shape of a triangle and then they just kind of built up according to the spiral. But again, how would they know how to do that? And how would they even know like, because, oh my God, what? Because at the time, there was no such thing as pyramid architecture. It was mostly just the cube. And you can see that through the actual pyramid itself, that there was just made out of cubes, unless it was, you know, some sort of statue for your god. In this way, it was just one big pyramid. And no one really knows why it was put there in the first place. Scientists actually went out and tried to prove this theory and see if there was actually an internal spiral ramp. But there ended up not being an internal ramp at all. It was basically all of the concrete brick. How did they get it that high? And also, how were they able to make it into a perfect pyramid aligned with the equator in perfect position to go all around the world in the same coordinates as the speed of light? It was just so incredible to think that these people were so ahead of their time and really knew what they were doing but no one knew the purpose or why it was put there or who even put it there in the first place oh my god this story reminds me of the lost city of machu picchu girl if you want a conspiracy about the lost city of machu picchu that there, if you actually like want to learn more about it on Disney Plus, there are like an entire series of the Lost City of Machu Picchu and like so many other ones. I'll put up my faves on the screen because take a screenshot, take a screenshot. So the spiral theory just kind of left people confused as to if there was no ramp, then how did they get all the blocks up to the very top? Because as I said, it is very, very tall and the heaviest rock is 70 tons. So how were they able to incline at the very, very top of this very, very tall pyramid with absolutely no help or no, what is that called? Not the crane, but the entire thing. Um, cat, I think it, the thing is called. It's like, um, oh my God. Oh my God. F factory, factory, man, you, um... You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. It's like the, it's different types of um, construction, construction cars, construction. I feel like we're playing a game. Construction cars can, what is, um, yes, yes, that's it. You got it. Great job. That. They didn't have any of that. And so people were very confused and had no clue how this thing even was able to come to be. And so that leads me to the second most popular believed theory in that it was 
aliens. Why this theory is so widely believed is because back in ancient times, there was this Egyptian god named Thoth. Thoth was believed to be the architectural genius behind all of the pyramids. But when you look at photos and hieroglyphics of Thoth, he has the head of like a duck or a goose. And Thoth was said to be the kind of leader of the entire architecture of this pyramid. And so then that's when people believed that it was possibly an alien that came down and told them what to do and also helped them along with the constructing of this pyramid. The reason why people believe this theory is because it was said that this pyramid was made for religious purposes in that it was going to be a burial site for their god but when you look inside of the pyramid there was no body there wasn't even a coffin in there just various rooms and then it was believed that the reason why thoth the alien wanted to build this pyramid in the first place was with the purpose of a navigation device you would know exactly where the equator was you would know the center of the earth that's why all the measurements on the pyramid were extremely precise me personally i don't really believe in this theory. Um, I feel like there are so, so many hieroglyphics and people from the ancient ages and gods. They typically made their god into an animal because it was just worshipped a lot back then. That's why you saw ancient Egypt uh, praising that beetle. I forgot the name of it, but they praised beetles and lions and various animals. And so they made their god into an animal because that's just what they praised. Also, I just don't think people um, can fathom the fact that someone other than a white straight male did something extraordinary. But those are just the two popular believed theories. We still don't know how they were able to lug 70 ton blocks up to the very top of this pyramid. We don't know why it was built or how it was built. How it was built like is I don't know, like that would be an incredibly interesting. Um, or maybe people already know and I'm just dumb. So those were the two like popular theories that I found. Now my third and final conspiracy theory is the disappearance of Cynthia Anderson. Now if you don't know who Cynthia Anderson is, I'm going to give you a quick breakdown because it's kind of important you know um, the 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 story before I throw theories at you. Cynthia Anderson was born on February 4th, 1961 in Toledo, Ohio. She grew up in a very, very religious family. Her parents went to church all the time. She went to church all the time and she dedicated her whole life's work to the church. They would volunteer at the church. They would spend their summers at summer camp at the church. They would go to the church every, nearly every day. All their friends and family were from church or going to church, 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 you know, just so much all the time. Her father actually described her as a woman of faith and had lots of friends. Oh, it wasn't until the year 1980 when Cynthia was 19 years old when she started getting these really weird nightmares in that she was going to get kidnapped and killed by a stranger. And these nightmares would happen quite frequently and to the point where she kind of got scared and so she told her mom about it and her mom just sort of brushed it off because she thought oh they're just dreams dreams aren't real like you're probably just eating something funny I don't know you're probably the devil so sorry that wasn't meaning to like I'm sorry um I don't know maybe it was the devil haha <laughs> pranked you. Sorry. Anyways, um, the mom just kind of brushed it off. Didn't really think too much of it until 1981. Cynthia was 20 years old and she was working as a secretary for a legal office. One day she walked into work and on big red letters on the window of the legal office, it said, I love you, Cindy, signed JW. Okay, so... I keep saying J, W, it's clearly G. I don't know why I kept on saying J. I think I had it in my notes as J. It was, it's G, obviously. Just pretend I'm saying G and not J. 
Okay, bye. Cynthia's nickname was Cindy, and not only that, but she was also the only Cynthia and Cindy that worked in that building, meaning the message was definitely for her. This obviously made her and everyone else around her and at the office very, very uncomfortable, but they ended up not even doing anything about it. And that message actually stayed on the window for a whole six months. So about six months later, they finally took the message down, but unfortunately, just a few weeks later, the message reappeared again with I love you, Cindy, signed JW, but this time in bigger letters than it was before. Cindy felt very, very unsafe to work there. She was actually contemplating quitting her job from there and just getting a new one, but since the company loved her so much, they decided to make her feel more safe. So they ended up not waiting six months and just covered it up as soon as possible. What, what heroes, am I right? Not only did they do that, but they also installed a panic button underneath Cynthia's desk. So in case she was ever in danger, she could just click on the panic button and it would notify everyone in the strip mall that she was in danger, which again, like, what does that have to do with anything? Like, what, what is Sapphire from Earthbound gonna do when, if the red button goes off and, like, Cynthia's in, in danger? I guess they can, like, call the police, but, like, so can Cynthia, I guess? I don't know. Wouldn't that be so much easier if you could just install a panic button that, like, would call the police? Sorry, I had to put on my lashes off camera because I am not talented yet. Co-workers started saying that Cynthia was acting a little bit more paranoid than usual and they just kind of assumed it was because of the sign outside but in reality not only was it the I love you Cynthia sign it was also because she started receiving very weird phone calls at work and it was noticed by one of her co-workers that she had actually picked up the phone and said hello and was only on the phone for a couple of seconds before she had abruptly ended the phone call and then when the phone started ringing again she just kind of let the phone call go through so even her co-workers were kind of getting scared for her and in the morning she was the only person in the office and so they directed her to make sure to lock the doors even if she was in there so they were really making sure that you know she felt safe and secure but in the end that wasn't enough because August 4th of 1991, Cynthia actually skipped breakfast with her family at 8.30 in the morning because she was late for work. She arrived at work at around 9.45 and you can tell because of various witnesses around the area and also her car was still in the parking lot, meaning that she had eventually arrived to work. One of her coworkers at around 12 p.m. walks into the office and hears the loud radio blaring and all of the lights on, but Cynthia was nowhere to be found. The attorney that actually walked into the office had also said that there was a strong smell of nail polish or nail polish remover as soon as he opened up the door, but it did look like she was there. Her stuff was still there, everything was neatly put, and Cynthia was the type of person to make sure that if she was stepping out for a little bit, she would leave a note or leave the phone calls on hold, but all of the phone calls that have called that morning were missing. They had left voicemails and there was no note. So we Weird about this is that the attorney actually said that when he walked into the office that morning the door was still locked from the inside and that's something that you can only do if you are on the inside there's no way that you can lock the door from the inside from the outside and the creepiest part that police noticed when investigating this scene is that when they went to go check out Cynthia's desk they saw no signs of struggle. There was no roughing in the carpet underneath. Nothing was pushed over. And at Cynthia's desk, there was a novel open, a novel that she had been reading for quite a bit. It was open to a portion of the book where the protagonist is getting kidnapped at night. Point. When news broke that Cynthia had actually been gone, everybody was out searching for her, the whole church was involved, her family was involved, everyone was talking to the police trying to figure out where she had went, but it was very 
hard to say because as I said, there was no signs of struggle. The place was locked from the inside as if she was still inside. All of her stuff was there. Her car was still in the parking lot. There was no money that was brought out of her account. She just completely vanished. Now that you know what happened to Cynthia, now let's get into the conspiracy theories that people believe of what happened to her. So the first theory is that Cynthia was kidnapped by an obsessed stalker. One of Cynthia's neighbors when talking to the police that Cynthia was very conventionally attractive. She had a very attractive face, attractive body, and so it wouldn't be that big of a shock if Cynthia had actually attracted the attention of a male passerby. This whole obsessed stalker theory would actually support the reasoning behind the I love you Cindy sign, but who is GW? George Washington? <laughs> So the police started doing a little bit of digging and realized that there was actually a maintenance man in the building by the initials of GW. And it would make sense that it would kind of be him because since he was a maintenance man, he had keys to all of the rooms in the building. And an even crazier part is on the day that she went missing, the maintenance man was not at work that day. So the police investigated him and asked him a bunch of questions but turns out he was at a doctor's appointment and he even had a doctor's note to prove it as well as looking at security footage of the hospital and lining up that he was at the hospital the same time as the disappearance would have occurred. So that maintenance man was eventually ruled out but even people today believe that it was the maintenance man that killed Cynthia because it just makes sense and as to why the door would be locked from the inside. Such a weird coincidence that he wouldn't be at work the same day that Cynthia is kidnapped. Uh, but again, the police did their thing and realized that there was no evidence and so no charges were proceeded. Theory number two actually came about from an anonymous tip that was brought to the police one month after Cindy went missing. The anonymous tip came from a woman who over the phone sounded like she was sort of whispering and like she was scared. And she said that Cynthia was actually trapped in the basement of a house and didn't give a specific address, but did say that it was two white houses combined and it it was owned by the same family and the family was out for vacation except for the son. The son was the only one home and he was the one that was keeping Cynthia held hostage. Now when the police begged for her to say more information, the call was immediately hung up, but she did call back a few minutes later and when the police picked up, she immediately didn't say anything and then just hung up. And then ever since then, the caller has never came back. No Nobody really knows who was on the other end and some even believe that it was possibly Cynthia which leads me into my third theory in that she just decided to run away. It was said by her sister that as I said earlier they were a very very religious family their whole life kind of was centered around church. Her sister had actually told the police that Cynthia was on the road to go to a bible college where she was going to be studying I think religious studies and she was going to pursue her life with God and her parents had already had the plan for her to go to this Bible school when she was done in the fall semester which ironically August is where she went missing and Cynthia's sister also confirmed that it was a very strict environment. They didn't really get to have much freedom when it came to just about anything and so people kind of speculated that maybe Cynthia didn't want to go to Bible school. Maybe she just wanted to live her own life and be free and the only way to do that was to stage a runaway. People also believe the catalyst of her running away was possibly a boyfriend. The father had said that a month leading up to her disappearance, she had actually been taking more notice on her face and her body. She started working out a lot more. She started wearing makeup and doing her hair more often. And so then that's when people believed that she possibly had a boyfriend and she ran away with this boyfriend. And this kind of ties into what I was saying earlier about how Cynthia could have made that tip. It was said by Shane from BuzzFeed Unsolved 
that he believes that possibly the tip that I mentioned earlier was actually made by Cynthia as a way to throw the police off of their track a little bit, throw them for a loop so then they weren't really looking for her anymore, but instead now looking for a house. Is it possible? There we go. She was the one who made the phone call about, you know, leading them on a wild goose chase to look for a white house to throw them off her scent. Now Whispering, that's... harder to identify her voice because a whisper, you can't totally tell who that is. Well, that would explain the lack of detail in the tip. And another reason why people believe this theory is that if she did run away, it would make even more sense of the fact that at the scene, there was no sign of struggle and also all of her stuff. Sorry if the camera angle changed a little bit. Uh, my SD card was full. Um, what was I even talking about? Oh yeah, she ran away. She ran like the wind, bullseye. So a lot of people do believe that she might have just ran away. Maybe her home life was so strict that she couldn't even really be herself anymore. And then she met someone that she then ran away with. And the third and final theory that a lot of people believed to what happened to Cynthia is that she might have overheard the inner workings of a drug deal and was killed. Actually, an attorney at the office she worked at named Neller and whose client was named Roger. Rodriguez and Neller and Rodriguez had actually been working in drug trafficking for many, many years, but was caught in 1996 for it. The reason why people believe this theory is because Cynthia actually worked very close with Neller, so she might have overheard something that she wasn't supposed to hear. Now, this theory would explain a lot of things. It would explain the reason why the person had keys to get into the office in the first place, because obviously, since Neller worked there, he had keys to get in and out. Out of the building and it would also explain why this was such a flawless cover-up because typically with those certain type of things you know you can't just do sloppy jobs you have to make sure that everything is perfect and put together and clean there is no trace of anyone and that's how it was in this situation there was no signs of struggle there was no fingerprints there was nothing now in 1995 when Neller and Rodriguez were actually caught for their little rendezvous um, Rodriguez was on trial for it and he actually confessed to the murder of Cynthia Anderson, but when the police actually looked into it, they found out that there was no substantial evidence and none of the facts that he was saying was leading up to the actual execution of the murder. And mostly all the things that he was saying was public knowledge. The judge ruled it that he didn't actually do it and he wasn't charged with the murder. Now, this is actually a very common thing that you see with these types of cases. A lot of criminals will confess to murders or extreme acts that they never actually did just to kind of hold it up as a trophy of like, oh, be scared of me because I did this thing even though they never did that thing. I mean, they're going to jail anyways. They might as well get the street cred while they're at it. But in this case, Rodriguez actually didn't kill her and that's kind of what he was trying to pursue. Now, as far as that case right now, it is still open and the police of Toledo, Ohio are still asking for anybody that knows any information about Cynthia to come forward. And this is actually still still the longest open case in the state of Ohio. There has been no information, new information since 1981 when the whole thing occurred. And as of 2008, the father had actually passed away and the family now is just, you know, living their life. Like there's really nothing you can do in this situation because there was nothing to be found. So that is all of the conspiracy theories that I have for you guys today. We talked about the Oakville incident and the mysterious blobs that rain from the sky of Oakville, Washington. We also talked about the why and how um, of the building of the Giza pyramids and the disappearance of Cynthia Anderson. And now I'm ready for my birthday. That was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to watch more of these videos, I would highly recommend you to subscribe because I make exactly this type of content all the time. And I would really, really love to hear what you guys think in the comments below. I love like responding and liking your guys' comments. And yeah, so I'm gonna enjoy being 19 for the very first time. This is from a thrift store. This is from a thrift store. This is from Hot Rags. These earrings are from a brand called Hyde. I think I'm saying that wrong. 
but this ceramic ring is from Spaceman Studios. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And all of my socials will be linked down below if you want to follow me on Instagram or Snapchat or I also have a PO box if you guys want to send me anything. I also made a Google form down below where you can put in your suggestions about different conspiracy theories or people that you want me to cover next um, just as a way for me to you know really understand what you guys want and also kind of get you guys involved with the videos a little bit more. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was super super fun to make. I honestly love making these conspiracy theory videos so much. Make sure to kick, click kick the subscribe button. Kick it. Kick it like a soccer ball or a football if you're from London. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day so far and I don't know if there's anything else I want to say. I won't keep you for too much longer. Don't worry. Go, go, enjoy the rest of your day. Go outside, breathe some fresh air, eat your favorite food, watch your favorite movie or TV show, whatever it is. Just, just go. Get, get your beautiful self out of here. I, I can't take it anymore. Being said, um, uh, <laughs> I don't want to leave. Uh, with that being said, do something that makes you happy today.